Welcome everyone. This is the Emergency Home Learning Summit and I'm Barbara Bray and I have the Rethinking Learning series. And today I have Craig Shapiro with me. Craig, I'm so happy you're here. Hi, Barbara. Um, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Hello, everybody. Um, I hope you get a chance to check this out. I think you'll really enjoy it. Well, we have a lot to talk about, so this is going to be great. And if, if you came across this video and you're not sure how we got here, you can actually register with the link below, and I have it on every slide. So I'll show you that in one moment. So let's, you know what? I want to just say why you're here and why I wanted you on, you know, be able to talk to you is that Craig has um, a Twitter chat called Teach Pause, all about positivity. Uh, it's always it's on Sunday evenings, and every time I'm on it, I feel so much better after. <laughs> I, I just love it, and. Craig also does this wonderful video before everyone, kind of giving the tips and some of the things you're going to talk about. And so, Craig, why don't you just give us just an idea of what we're going to talk about, why I have wellness and hope up here also. Well, you know, Barb, you and I have talked about the, you know, the, the COVID situation and, and how, I guess, stressful it is for so many people, the anxiety it's caused. And when you asked me to come on, we kind of mentioned this idea of, you know, how can we give people hope, talk a little bit about wellness, um, make them feel positive, even in these times that are so, so challenging. And, and let me be clear, like, I don't think anybody, myself included, has, has all the answers because nobody does. But when you have dialogue, especially with people that are trying to promote wellness and hope and positivity, um, I've, I've always felt that it can never do any harm and people can decide for themselves whether or not they think it's helpful or not. Um, my background is in the wellness field, so what I do for a living. So hopefully I can, um, you know, give a little guidance, give some tips and just kind of have a conversation about how we can try to be a little bit more hopeful, a little bit more well, maybe a little bit more positive, maybe. I love it. And so I put our... Uh... Twitter handles there. So you definitely, if you're on Twitter, you have to connect with Craig because there's so much you can learn. Plus, just to let you know, Craig and I put together a Google Doc for you. So on the lower left is a link to the Home Learning Summit, all about this, um, you know, the video that we're doing right now. Let me move. Now, I'm just going to say this because we're going to talk about the pandemic, but I don't think any teacher, any parent, any student was ever, ever prepared for this pandemic. We don't, even if they say we're going to, we're going to go back to school or we're going to work remotely. What does that mean? Right? We, we just didn't know. What do you think about just seeing this picture? Doesn't it seem like yeah. you and me? You know, it's, actually, it's funny, Bob. I was actually going to say, I love the graphic. Um, and I, again, I, I think your, your line about being never prepared, that's so true. You know, I, I am definitely the kind of person that honestly tries to stay even keel and I, I try not to get too high or too low about things. But um, before when Barbara and I started to do the video, we were just chatting a little bit about things and like how are things and, and truth be told, you know, they are stressful. Um, I, I don't care how positive you are, um, how upbeat you are. I think it's always important to recognize when things are stressful. And this is one of those times to, to try to deny that um, would really just negate it because we can try to get better, but we have to acknowledge the situation first. And the pandemic is here. You know, There's nothing right now Barb and I can do about that. It's here. What we can try to do is just try to help people. And I think that's what we have to try to do for everybody. And that graphic really kind of sums it up. It's very scary for lots of people. Yeah. It's from that Pixar, you know, Inside yeah. Out or whatever. I can't remember. But uh, I, when I saw it, I went, oh, this is exactly how I felt. And then talking to teachers who had to go back, you know, they were told to go back, but they didn't have the proper 
PPE, you know, all the things that they needed. They didn't have the training. They didn't have all of that. It got scary. So schools are trying to figure this out. But in the meantime, teachers and parents are in a real tough situation. So let's go to the start with some of our ideas. And this first one, since you're the positivity guy, um, why don't, you know, let's just kind of think about this. How do you stay positive when you're freaking out? <laughs> yeah, that's, um, you know what, I, I honestly, Barbara, I, I get that from a lot of people. They'll be like, Craig, how do you, you know, how do you stay upbeat and how do you smile? And even with kids, um, I, I know it sounds crazy and people who are watching this might, it might not believe it, but I really believe it's practice. Like it's, it's being in the mode of trying to stay positive not fake positive, like, mm -hmm. I don't mean that. I mean, like really trying to stay upbeat, but also realizing that it's okay to, to be a little sad at times, you know, that's okay, it's natural. But the, the point of staying positive and trying to look at the bright side is of course incredibly important. We all know that. Yeah. Like if, if, if all we're focusing is on is everything that's wrong, then it's very hard to stay positive because you're looking at it from a totally different lens of perspective. I love that. I mean, you know, there's some questions is like, how do you do that? I, I'm just thinking of myself, just I'll give you an idea is that I decided I needed to wake up every morning and be grateful. Yep. So I started, I put it away. I have a gratitude jar. Mm -hmm. I brought it back out and said, you know, if I don't change this, I was going down and spiraling if I don't say something I'm grateful for every day, I, there's no reason to get up, right? I'll tell you, you know what? Like, I hope, I hope somebody just heard what you said because ultimately the idea of being grateful and being positive, being hopeful, you can't wish it. Like, it doesn't work like that. Like, I can't wish myself to be positive. I, I can't wish that I'm hopeful. I have to do something first, whether it's a gratitude journal, a gratitude jar, um, having a ritual every morning that you do, something to start your day in a very positive fashion. Because it's like anything else, it's habits. What habits do we do that are gonna help us to stay positive or even honestly to just get positive? Like I, I am the first person to admit, um, I think I've always been a positive guy, but you know, I think more so now because I've really trained myself with the habits I do. Well, give me an example of what you do to stay positive. Okay, I so, mean, and, and then we have to talk about teaching too because there's some other things that are happening. So for, for me, it's just very simple. Um, again, sounds crazy, but for me, every morning when I wake up, I make a promise to myself that I'm going to have a good day. Hmm. And again, it, you know, there's things that happen during the day that might obviously affect that, of course, but it's the initial idea of when this day starts, whatever happened the day before is, is history. Because I, I can't change what that was. All I can do is when I wake up in the morning, get out of bed, think that I'm going to have a good day, practice a smile, practice to stretch, Something that's going to get me thinking about something positive. And I can tell you, I will just hop in very quickly. When I, when, you, when I go to school every day, there is a promise that I have made to myself and for students for many, many years. And that is this issue that I am going to be positive all the time. And it doesn't mean perfect. It just means trying to be positive. Wow. I, I had some... I went through a period a few months ago where it just got to me where I couldn't see my family and I couldn't, I know parents and grandparents, especially who can't see their grandchildren, it's really tough. And so I was feeling really down and my husband said, did anything good happen today? Or did you learn something today? And I mentioned something that I did and he goes, you know, that's a lesson and a blessing. That's a blessing, he said. You mm, got to like start thinking about those moments, those joyful moments, or those moments you can learn from, even if they're tough. 
that can help you, in, you know, feel positive. And I never thought of it that way. It really helped me, even though I wanted, you know, at that time I didn't want to, you know, it's my husband. I'm like, oh, leave me alone. Right. <laughs> I can do it, you know. But and, it, and you, it, it's so funny you say that, Barb, because there's a lot of times where, um, where people will kind of poo poo like this idea of, well, how, you know, how do you just be positive or how do you just be hopeful? Yeah. How do you just do that? Right. Like, but it, it really does take a few little things like what you're saying with a blessing. Like it's, it's, it, even though it might sound weird and corny, it's not because you have to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you keep finding ways to not do something, then you can't expect it to get done because you keep finding ways to not do it. Yeah, you and, procrastinate. Right, yeah. and, it, and it, again, it doesn't mean perfect. Well, the problem with teachers, like me, I'm a perfectionist. Yep. A lot of us are, and we don't want to look bad in front of the kids or, or for a parent, we don't want to admit that we made a mistake, but actually we need to do those things now because we're not going to be perfect, not now. It's, it's right. just being, it's just being, it's actually just being a human being. That's right. Like, I mean, like what kid, like, I don't know how many times I've said to students, hey guys, the girls, listen, so I am messed that up. Let's try it again. Like kids of all ages, from young kids all the way up, they respect and appreciate a human side to it. Yeah. Whoever, well, I want to know whoever said that we are supposed to be perfect because we're an educator. That's ludicrous. I don't know. I mean, but we might have done it to ourselves because that's what? maybe, you know, because there were the kind of people that got into teaching because we thought we had to be perfect. Okay, so now let's go to the next one because we could stay on this for an hour, you know? I know, I know, it's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're the wellness guy too. So tell, you know, give me some ideas on this one. Okay, so um, so Barbara's talking about this. So besides the teach pause that I do on Sunday nights, I also um, started something called Positively Well. It's like another hashtag. It's not like another handle on Twitter. Um, and basically it's just, it was a way to kind of promote wellness. So when we talk about wellness for anybody, educators, kids, parents, whatever it is, you have to kind of think about, first of all, you have to reflect on your own wellness. You have to think about, you know, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel emotionally? How do you feel physically? What habits are you doing that are going to promote um, your wellness? And a lot of times when I talk to people, unfortunately, because of the way things are, people think that they have to change everything right away. Mm. And that's a recipe for failure. It's just not going to happen. You got to take baby steps, just the same thing with the positive piece. So I, I always try to say like, what is the one thing you know you can do a little bit better that's going to help your wellness? Maybe it's eating something healthy. Maybe it's getting up and moving. Maybe it's coming to school that day and playing music for your class to kind of brighten the mood. Um, maybe it's greeting people, obviously in an un-COVID situation, but it's, again, it's, it's something, a little thing that you can do and you build upon it. Like, it's like a pyramid. Like you got to have a base that you're going to build upon. Like some people think I have to build the whole pyramid all at once. Mm -hmm. Well, of course we know that won't work. You have to build a base. And if that base is nutrition, great. If it's exercise, great. If it's surrounding yourself with positive people, like the Twitter PLN that we have, there is not a person in that group that is not positive. Well, at and, least they're not showing it. Well, right, right, right. And, <laughs> that, right. and you don't know, yeah. you know, you, you don't know down deep what somebody is. Yeah, but or what they're least, going through, you know. Right, but at least in those moments, they are, they are promoting a wellness attitude. And again, mm -hmm. that's, that's what we really have to do. You have to start somewhere with an attitude that's going to help you with your wellness. That's right. Now, I'm just going to tell you, I'm really proud of myself. <laughs> I decided that I was going to lose weight. I decided. And the only thing I could think of, because I had a problem with my sugar level was going up and my weight was going up and I'm a, not a real tall person. I was going, well, if I was six feet tall, I'd be perfect, but I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> so I decided to really watch the carbs. Yeah. I went yeah. to a nutritionist. I worked through a whole bunch and I'm so proud of myself. Up to this time, I've lost 14 pounds. 
That's great. And I've also dropped my sugar level that I'm no longer pre-diabetic. I mean, that's pretty cool for me. That's I'm right. really... and, and what I'd say to you is I want to ask you a question. Uh -huh. And I think this will help everybody. So in many of the videos I do, I talk about well, like, you know, nutrition and all that stuff. But I want to ask you this. And it's a very simple thing. Do you feel better? I feel so much better. I sleep so, better. So the bottom Everything. line, the 14 pounds, well, while that is great, mm -hmm. what's much better is the fact that you feel so much better. Yeah. Because that's ultimately what wellness is about. How do you feel? And if, if they go hand in hand, you know, you said, I feel so much better. I sleep so much better. My blood sugar's down. That's all about wellness. Yeah. I have one more. I've been doing mindfulness training. And so I'm doing a lot of breathing mm -hmm. and breathing strategies. So, and dancing occasionally. I have to, every 20 minutes I get up. So I have a run keeper and I have some other things that I watch that my doctor's helping me with. And, and what happens is if I can get up and do at least 5,000 steps in the house. I mean, I'm not outside because of the, yeah. I live in California. We have not only, not only wind that I didn't even know we could meet today. You know, I was a little anxious. <laughs> we had smoke because of the fires. We couldn't go outside. We had so much going on. So I said, you know, I got to make my inside a place where I can get well. Mm -hmm. I can do something. So mm -hmm. I do five to 7,000 steps. I dance, I breathe, and I take breaks from my device. Mm -hmm. And just sometimes I'll just read or I walk in my garden. But I think yeah. that every one of us needs, and there's parents out there that are just, the, they can't balance working at home. And then all of a sudden their kids need help on the computers. And it's, this wellness piece is big. I think um, I was going to say something because I really, I really like what you brought up about being in the house and moving, right? Um, this for everybody, here's something. And if it comes off harsh, it, it's not meant to. It's just really more like honest and helpful, I hope. Um, there is no excuse to not move. And, you know, <laughs> if you're taking five or 7,000 steps in your house, you're moving. If you are just sedentary, there are so many negative things that happen from just being sedentary. I, 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 don't, I could speak for hours about it, but the fact that you're getting up and moving and finding a little bit of time, that is all connected to that overall wellness continuum. That's what I always call it, a wellness continuum. And where is your continuum? You know, Sometimes it's all the way down here and sometimes it's all the way here, but a lot of times it's in the middle. It's going to move. And yeah. your idea of, of watching what you're eating and moving, those two things are universal. And it's universal for everybody. Parents, kids, teachers, mm -hmm. leaders, for everybody. That's mm -hmm. universal wellness. Well, I've watched your, when you talk about from Positivity Well, uh, I really think that you're helping me by some of the things that you're saying, because I see you out there. I, I hope some people connect to you and they can listen to some of your videos because what I found, Craig, is that um, you, this is in your heart. You believe this so much and your kids and your students really, you know, they really learn from you, but they miss you and they need, they need those videos and being connected. So. I'm hoping teachers will do what we're doing and parents maybe somehow doing some videos and sharing, like walk, walk along and talk about what you're doing and do a selfie at the same time. You know, um, I think it's that's so hard. It. I'll tell you what, um, one of the things I, 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 I truly admire about you is you're willing to, to be a risk taker. Um, and a lot of people, <laughs> And, and I am as well, because I, I honestly don't really care most of the time. I'm trying to make a difference and hopefully people like it. Mm -hmm. um, we have to put ourselves out there in these challenging times. You know, and sometimes I've always said this, and this is what I believe. If 
if one person watches what we're doing and they get something out of it, it's so worth it yeah. because everybody needs assistance and help. And when it comes to like the wellness piece as an educator, I do live it, but I also live it as a person. It's been part of my life for mm-hmm. since I've been a young kid. Um, and what, and what would be wrong with it? Like what's wrong with being positive? <laughs> nothing. nothing. What's yeah. wrong with, what's wrong with being hopeful? Nothing. What's well, wrong? let's get, well, let's get to hope. Okay. Let's talk about that because Sorry about that. no, that's okay. It, you know, it's, there's not much on the slide, but we're going to add a lot to it because one of the things, um, there's also an Roman Novak also has build hope EDUs, yes. which Great. is right after yours. Great and job. I just love Roman and what he does, yep. but both of you, this idea of having hope, some people, I'll just let you know, I've talked to some people who call me or want to talk, feel like they have no hope. They, they're not happy with the situation. They can't work with their kids. They're, they want to quit as a teacher. How do we, what do we say? God, I'm thinking, um, (laughs) well, the first thing I think we have to do is we have to acknowledge. Okay. A lot of times people will say, it's okay. It's going to be okay. It'll be okay. But the person doesn't want to hear that. They're dealing with stress, anxiety. They don't have hope. When you say, don't worry about it, it'll be okay. You're totally denying how they feel. So the first thing we have to do is we have to acknowledge that people are going through pain or or having trouble. And the next step, at least for me, again, no, no, I'm not an expert to just talk about it is, is really trying to give some steps that are going to be helpful for people. And they all tie into the same things. What can you do as a person that's going to give you hope? I mean, that is, I don't know. I mean, when you just said that, I was thinking of somebody who contacted me and said that their life is just miserable. And first thing, because I I've, I've been in therapy and I've and I know someone who I was concerned they might hurt themselves. I asked this one person, I said, I have you made plans? I said, and they go, Oh no, 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 no. And so right there, then I can open the door mm-hmm. and make sure that they they're just down right now. They, they're they having some issues. And I then you don't, like you said, don't discount these feelings, but let them talk about them. And, and the whole piece, uh, mm-hmm. you know, if I said to you, Barb, is COVID going to be here forever? That would be scary for some people. But, but do you think it's going to be? I think in some form, there's going to be some kind of coronavirus because we've had them before. I just don't know if this one it, you know, who knows? We don't know about a, you know, a vaccine. We don't know about a lot of things. It- so what I, what I would generally say is in our lifetimes, things happen. This coronavirus right now, the way it is right now is not going to be here forever. I mean, mm-hmm. things will get better in the history. Eventually, of- yeah. eventually things will get better. So the whole piece has to be centered around things getting better, Mm. yourself getting better. Because if you're just looking at the right now, I feel hopeless, I'm sad. Oh my God, this is gonna last forever. What can somebody say to that person when they believe that? Because ultimately Mm. you have to be able to find a glimmer. Like I I mean, I say this to kids, you know, what's your glimmer? Mm. What is your glimmer? And when you say that to people, the first thing it does, it gets them thinking. Mm -hmm. Because everybody has that. There's something, there's a bright light. There's something. I get it. It's just hard to find it. Well, I, you know, I wrote that in my book, which is kind of neat. I mean, I, I, I asked people that and some people, and this is before there was the coronavirus and that. I guess it's about your why. What is your purpose for being here? And you don't, if someone says, I don't have a purpose, then let's let's figure this out. Because there's so much about you, about you, you know, that we want to learn about. 
right? Well, I, I mean, I, I, and my thing is that um, I try to listen more now. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, the listening, well, you know, we know that the listening piece is, is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. We know that. I mean, you got to, I mean, that's, think about how many times you and I have talked to each other. You, well, don't you, tell, don't tell my husband, okay? <laughs> um, but the thing, I, I guess, I guess the thing I would just say about the hope piece is, mm -hmm. you know, when you, when you really think about it, positive, being positive, being well, being hopeful, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They all blend. Yeah. There's a, there's a blend. You, you, you like somebody who's really positive about things generally has something else with it. Somebody who feels really good about themselves, who has a lot of wellness, there's usually mm -hmm. something with it. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's hopeful about the future and, and now mm -hmm. they all kind of blend and they don't have to be, I, I'll mm -hmm. say this many times. Let's just say that each one being hopeful, having wellness and being positive, they're all on a one to 10 scale, okay? Nobody has tens all the time in each. Yeah. And we have to acknowledge that, but you might have a six in hope, an eight in wellness and a seven in being positive. You know, the problem lies is when all of them are ones. Well, I haven't met anyone as all ones but one person scared me a little bit. But the thing is, is that when you actually can, I'm not a therapist for one thing. Yeah. And so I don't want to try to, you know, say the wrong thing, but I also want to say, just tell me what's going on. And, and then when you said, is there a glimmer? Look, or some people say a silver lining, or is there something there that, you know, you just want to have more time to do or more time to think about or more time to learn. Is there something? And there is always something. Always. Always something. You know, I, the reason I don't, the reason I don't say silver lining is because people mm -hmm. have heard that. Yeah. They, they've heard it. Like, oh, well, what's your silver lining? I usually say glimmer because it's not something that people usually hear. Like, oh, I like that. I like that. You know, where, wh where's your glimmer coming from? And it gets people to think, you know, okay, what is that little piece going on with me that is positive? Like, I could say right now, oh, you know, I had a really tough day, but I had a chance to spend time with Barbara, who made my day better. And again, like, you got to find that. Yeah, you, you got to find it. Oh, you made because my it, day. You're my glimmer. I'm going to, okay, so I'm going to stop the share, but not stop the recording because I want to just bring us together just to kind of pull everything together. Okay. Yep. All right. So let's just kind of say what you just said, which made me feel really good is that it was your glimmer. But you also said that all of us have somewhere on the scale, we have that positivity scale we have the wellness and some of us are kind of, you know, because we're in the house or we're not handling some things very well, we're not eating as well. Maybe we can work on that a little bit more, but the hope, that hope, maybe figure out a way that we can encourage them to think about something that has that glimmer so they have that hope. Does and that sound like what you were saying? Yeah, because that's, that's what it is, like, you know, again, and it's like repeating the same thing over and over and over again, the same message that everybody, you know, some people are naturally very upbeat and positive and hopeful. I mean, it's, it's we are humans and other people, not so much. Yeah. In, in, especially in unique, challenging times like now, it is choices that we make and it is choices. Sometimes it's easier for some people to make choices than others, no doubt. And we have to acknowledge that. But the little things that we do to be hopeful, to improve our wellness, like you did by cutting, watching your, your sugars, by getting up and moving, by being positive, by spending time that's important. Those, they seem like big things, but they're really not. They're just little things tied together that make a difference. And once you start bringing them together in a little chain, yeah. the effect is huge. Well, I, I look at some people, maybe they maybe diet and 
exercise is not the thing, but right. maybe the thing might be the teachable moment that when you're walking outside with your child and you find something in the garden. So I just want to let you know it's in my garden right now, just to uh, tell you. And, 30, and 30 caterpillars. Oh my God. I have, yeah, the, the monarchs came back. We have milkweed oh. and I'm watching them and praying that they're going to turn into these beautiful butterflies. So every day I go out and I count them. I'm trying to find them and see if there's a chrysalis out there. So just imagine if you go in the garden or you go outside and you go for a walk and you find a leaf or you hear a bird or you see a cloud, that's the glimmer. It, it is. And that's, the thing is, is you already have that. Like that's kind of, that's kind of just you. Um, <laughs> the, the, and, and it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean never sad or never upset, but you already have that piece. What we got to hope for by doing this is people will find that glimmer in something, in something like it, it can be garden, it can be walking, be spending time with, you, with your children or your family or, or really enjoying your job, whether you're yeah. an educator or something else. It has to be something, the Aww. little thing. Because if you don't find that little bit of glimmer, then it's easy to lose that hopefulness that you want to get. But let's think on a positive note, because I, I have to close this. Unfortunately, <laughs> I love this. This is, the, hey everybody, this is my glimmer. <laughs> Today, tonight, I always love talking to you, Craig. And the thing is, is that um, one of the things that you do is you bring that glimmer because what you do is help people open the door to find things that maybe they weren't looking at before. And when I started bringing out my gratitude jar, I reached inside and I pulled out something and I, and you will love this. <laughs> one of them was, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I pulled it out yesterday and it said, I am so grateful for teach pause. <laughs> well, I'm glad <laughs> we do. I, we I don't even know how that happened. So every day I, put, I, I mean, it was really funny that it happened. I should go. I didn't, I put it back in the jar, but anyway, what I'm finding is it's really important to do what we do and share it. And when you have those moments, share it with somebody. And if you don't have somebody, then reach out, reach out. Because I didn't know you a few, it was a few years ago. I never knew you. Yeah. Now we talk a lot yeah. and I love this. Well, we, you know what, we've made that, we've made that connection because it's been important to us. Yeah. And, and again, it goes back to the things that we've spoken about, you know, um, I'm just hopeful that that people who are watching this and listening to both of us will pick up one thing. Yeah. Maybe not a whole bunch of things, uh, one thing, one little thing that says, you know, you know what? I was listening to Barbara and Craig and I picked up this one tip that I think I can try, or I heard them and it inspired me to be positive, or it gave me this chance to be hopeful, or I learned something about my own wellness that maybe I can improve on because it doesn't have to be everything. It just has to be one thing. Mine was bread and I had to give it up. But I have to say that I actually am okay now. All right. We, we could talk. For, you don't even want to go into the nutrition piece. With no, me. we're going to go. But anyway, thank you so much, Craig. And uh, I hope everyone enjoyed our time about positivity and wellness and hope and Keep looking for that glimmer. Thank you, Barb. Thank you.